Hello there and welcome to Vermin Hunters TV with me Si Pitway. Today on the show I'm back at one of my permissions in Gloucestershire. It's not the pig or chicken farm, it's a private estate where the landowner wants any of the legal UK vermin species shot. It will be mainly rabbit and today I've brought my Brocock Compato. You'll see I've got my Sony Handycam on a mount on top and I've also got a step up adapter on the back of my Mamba scope here which I can screw the Sony Handycam onto if I uh, want to take some scope cam footage. You'll notice I've got my bipod on here, it's a Demon Deben tilting bipod uh, and if the opportunity arises where I can get static uh, and get the scope cam on the back of the Mamba scope and get you some reticle uh, aim point uh, video I'll do that known as scope cam in. Uh, we've also had requests from uh, new shooters who's joined our Facebook group and also our YouTube channel for some tips. So I'll be giving some basic tips. Please, if you are an experienced air gunner, uh, bear with this. Uh, remember, we all wasn't experienced uh, all his life and we had to learn somewhere. Uh, so I'm, we're trying to sort of like cater for everybody's needs. So there will be a few. I won't be doing this always, but I'll be interjecting a few along this episode. I've had a walk round already, there's plenty of vermin about, there's plenty of rabbits. Uh, I've tried not to scare too many off, but I wanted to check, make sure that uh, I know where all the livestock is for when I'm obviously shooting, so where my trajectory is, and just to make sure there is no one on the land, and there shouldn't be anyway, it's private, and there wasn't. So I'm going to get to it now, and hopefully we'll get some stuff for you. Enjoy. That's a shame, he's, uh, his mate's just run off. I can't see him from this location. That was 36 metres. First shot of the day for the Compato. Uh, and done its job nicely. So, walking up to the first rabbit. And there he is. As expected, perfect shot placement. You can see the large pool of blood in the ear shows a good head shot. Just why I'm at this position, I don't know if I can catch him running, just running off. I might have just missed him. There was actually rabbits in the field and there is some. Further out as you can see. Maybe, there's another one there, look. Maybe there's some closer. Sometimes you squeak them, they run. Bit of wind. There we go. That was a 60 meter shot. 66 yards. A little bit of right hand side for the wind. Danny went with a compato. Well, that was another pleasing shot uh, with the compato uh, and the mamba scope. Uh, same place as I've shown you in other episodes where I've sniped from. It's uh, underneath the edge uh, and it's 60 meters, 66 yards. You can see there was a little bit of wind. Uh, it wasn't a full 90 degree wind to where I was looking. Uh, it, it was probably a 45 degree. So I just gave it enough wind uh, for the sort of like distance I was shooting. And so I hit it cleanly, knocked it straight over. Uh, really pleased with that and it's nice to get them sort of shots on scope cam because sometimes we do get from time to time people sending messages asking can we see the scope cam footage which is nice to actually see where your aim points are and also what you know how you apply windage to different scenarios uh, so yeah that's good 
you also get the people who don't actually believe that we're shooting at the distance as we do and uh, with a sub 12 foot pound air rifle like this compacto uh, so it's always you know nice to to verify that what we're saying we don't lie and uh, there's no need to lie that it's the truth okay on a day like today then what I would say the shooting conditions aren't perfect and what I mean by perfect is there's no wind at all so you haven't got to uh, aim off for wind uh, a trick what I do a lot and I do it almost every time I can when there's a little bit of wind is it might sound a bit uh, obvious but uh, if you look on the floor here I'll just move the camera you can see all these um, I think they were some sort of dandelion uh, and it's a seed for the dandelion I'll just pick one up I pick these up a lot uh, and when I'm in actually uh, in a breeze and before I take a shot if possible I usually do this and watch where the seeds actually go gives you a really good indication uh, of which way the breeze is blowing also sometimes uh, when I shoot wood pigeon uh, once I've shot the wood pigeon I take a few of the uh, breast feathers not the outer ones but the inner ones uh, put them in my pocket uh, and if there is a breeze throw one up and just watch where it's going before I have to take the shot it's just giving yourself an advantage it might sound obvious like I say and people might laugh and say yeah well that's obvious I uh, maybe it's not for everyone especially if they're starting up uh, and even though it is obvious and quite simple uh, it's something I do all the time and it really works Thirty-eight meters. Just gave it just over one mil dot one and a quarter. I'm walking along this field now, and this field normally has sheep in, uh, which keeps the grass short when they're grazing. But I don't think the landowners had sheep in for uh, a month or two now, so the grass has got quite long. Uh, and the distance I've walked, which is, I don't know, 40, 45 yard maximum, uh, through the grass, I couldn't see anything with my eyes, and five rabbits have bolted at the grass, just laid in the grass, I couldn't see them. Uh, so I need to find somewhere on the permission where the grass is a bit shorter, I've got a better view to shoot, because there are rabbits, as I can see, but getting a shot at them uh, is going to be hard. That's about 15 meters. This rabbit is just 61 meters. Bit of wind. Oh! <laughs> you don't get much better than that. One of the tips I'm going to give you is if you're thinking of stalking rabbits or even static hunting rabbits uh, you need to start off downwind uh, and when you pull up at your permission what I usually do is if I can as I've already said uh, throw up an old dandelion and see where the seeds go or whatever piece of grass leaf uh, see which way the wind's blowing and then plan my route so this permission is quite a big permission uh, and there's it's a circular route and you could come up obviously any way you want so ideally find out where the wind where the wind's blowing and go to the furthest point of the, of the permission so you're downwind uh, and then work up there and then when you see your target ideally try and get yourself exactly in line with the wind so if there is that breeze or that wind you're not having to aim off left or right especially uh, starting off shooting because it can be distressing if you're starting to shoot uh, and you're shooting at rabbits and they're on your zero let's say but you're missing them or you're wounding them uh, quite badly and you can't understand why but it's all down to wind but if you've got the wind behind you uh, sorry in front of you blowing into your face the pellet will be blown down a little bit so bear in mind 
uh, aim up the tiniest little bit uh, from the say this is the uh, the normal kill zone on the rabbit if the wind is if you're exactly downwind and you're shooting into the wind then aim it just a little bit higher because the wind will blow it down nine out of ten times which will push it back exactly into the right spot where you uh, where you need to hit for a nice clean humane kill but if you try coming from upwind working downwind to where your target is they'll smell you before they even see you and I've even tried this and experimented myself even static hunting there's been times when I have not been able to go downwind uh, of a warren and so I've had to go upwind and there's only been the slightest breeze uh, and you'll notice a rabbit will come out it won't see you it'll sit on basic next to its warrant and then tap its feet drum its feet which for rabbits is a warning sign if you see them drumming the feet they're drumming the ground sending a vibration to all the rabbits under the ground in the warrant and it's a, it's a warning it's danger uh, they probably can't see you but they can smell you uh, and what you find is it'll either sit there drum and you might get a shot but that might be the only shot you get for an hour or two and then you might if you're lucky you might get one more come out uh, but you also might get it come out smell you and go straight back down the hole but I've also experimented where I've been downwind on, uh, on what rabbit warrens uh, and they'll keep coming out popping out all day uh, and I think about four years ago one of Davies permissions uh, I'm not obviously going to mention the place but I think I got 18 rabbits in under five minutes uh, just by sitting at a warren uh, in a wood and coming downwind of the warren and uh, shooting them and that was with a uh, Sandal Field Sports HW97 spring rifle as well. So, little tip. Just see that part of his head. I know he's. We're not far off. So here's my compatter with my scope cam, and I've just took that shot on that small rabbit. So you notice it's only under cam on a step up adapter. I also have got a mount here so I can put the Sony under cam on top if I want to use it to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, and I've got a Weaver to 30mm bodied adapter on here so I can use my shot tracks if I need it. Again. Well, over the past few months I've been reading not only in the Vermin Hunters TV Facebook group but also in various shooting forums within the UK uh, people posting about the Brocock Compato and now it's been released the Brocock Bantam and a lot of people are really happy with their purchases uh, as I am with mine uh, and they're getting good results. This one I've been using here is the one we actually did the review with which I think was about a year ago. Uh, and I bought it, I really liked it uh, and hopefully over the past year with the episodes me and Davies released you can see that the results what we got within the review episode we've managed to replicate many many times you know to show that it, it is uh, this rifle is as good as we've said however that there are people who's not happy with their purchase uh, and uh, as forums do and groups do people talk about it uh, and me and Davey always say you can do 10 really good things uh, on a channel and then you do one bad thing and that one bad thing wipes out all 10 good things and uh, that the one bad thing is the thing what's remembered uh, and negative comments in forums can really have a bad uh, and damaging effect to, to people and to organizations uh, and as these comments have been building up uh, we've started to receive some comments insinuating on our YouTube channel that we're taking bribes from Brocock to say what we're saying about the Compato, which is uh, it's ludicrous because uh, we don't. To be honest, we've uh, not had any communication with Brocock for the last eight months since Adam Woods left, hence why we've not even uh, reviewed a Bantam on the channel. Uh, and because people are thinking we're taking bribes and we're lying, it's putting both mine and David's honesty and integrity in question or to question uh, and both them things are some of what me and David pride itself uh, on having a lot of honesty and a lot of integrity and people who know us know how much them two things mean to us so it's quite concerning 
So I decided to try and do something about it, not only for me and David, but also for the customers within the UK who's bought a Compatible or a Bantam and not happy with it. Because, uh, you know, I want you to have the same pleasure that I have from shooting mine. So after doing a little bit of investigative work, I managed to get hold of a contact number of a gentleman called Stefano. And Stefano is one of the senior managers within Brocott. I think the gentleman's Italian, but he's got a UK mobile. Uh, so I phoned him yesterday uh, and I had about a 25 to 30 minute conversation with him. Uh, and after speaking to him, uh, I found out he was a really nice man, very proud of, of Brocock as the company, uh, and he really rates and values his UK customers. Uh, and when I told him, I was really honest with him, I told him, you know, some of the stories I'd read, uh, and th this was all new to him and he was very concerned, he, rightly so, it's his company and obviously he wants the best for his company or, or it's the company he works for and he wants the best for, his, for this company and he also wants the best for the UK customers. So uh, I said to him, you know, that I'm doing this uh, and, you know, I, hopefully something can get resolved out of it uh, and he was very concerned about not only their reputation but also VHTV reputation and he obviously didn't want people thinking bad of us uh, and he's decided that uh, he's given me his personal contact details and he says that anybody who I know or I see is not happy with the either their Compato or their Bantam uh, I can pass on his contact details so they can speak to him directly now, I don't want to be and neither does David involved with any Brocock business or anyone else's business but I'm happy to pass on uh, Stefano's number so if you have got a problem uh, a genuine issue with your compatto or your bantam uh, please send me a private message on Facebook I'm under it as Simon Pittaway uh, I'll get your message just put two or three lines about what gun it is and what issue you have in and then I will send you uh, a message with Stefano's contact details on so you can give him a call and I'll let you then uh, speak to Stefano direct and hopefully he will be able to put your issue uh, or sort your issue out uh, and if there is a trend if there's something uh, you know what Brocock are not aware of uh, he'll build up a trend and he'll be able to get that fixed so people going forward who have purchases of Compatos they're all going to be as happy as I am uh, with mine uh, when they buy their own.